I Got the Hell Out does contain explicit content that might not be suitable for some listeners, such as children, those that easily get offended, and we do recommend that listeners at work put your earbuds in if you have co-workers around. And if you like the show, please spread the word by telling as many people as you can. We'd also appreciate if you would subscribe, rate, hopefully with five stars, and review the podcast on iTunes. You can find us there as well as on Stitcher and Overcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Was In A Cult, on Facebook at I Got The Hell Out, and on Instagram at I Got The Hell Out with an underscore after each word. You can contact us through our website at IGotTheHellOut.com. Yeah, we're ready. Hi, this is Debbie. <laughs> and I'm Laura. And this, this is I Got The Hell Out. And we had a lot of fun discussing how we were going to do this, and we just decided, you know, we're just... We just hit the record button, we're ready to jump go. Jump right on in. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to your daughter, Sammy, first of all. She is graduating. Her birthday Her was... Her birthday was yesterday. 18. 18, I know. My she's, baby's 18. She's at an award ceremony today because she is so great in music and art and talent and stuff. <laughs> Um, she had prom over the weekend. I know. I mean, she just must be whirling. So she, yeah, we love you, Sammy. I'm yeah. sure your mama loves you more, but I, I still, <laughs> Maybe I still just like a you bit a lot. More. I yeah, still like just you a little lot. bit more, Sammy. Oh, by the way, you said you were going to check Facebook. Was I a creeper last week when I was sitting? You in the were not a creeper last week. Nobody posted anything about a mysterious van in uh, the well, neighborhood. Well, my van is black, so it's not like white free candy. So it's not on like white white killer. Right, but it doesn't man. say free candy, and I, I don't really think I look like a kidnapper or a serial killer, do I? Oh, those are the ones that are tricky. <gasps> um, I, those are the tricky ones. I don't know, no, I, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know, no. I don't know. Um, what did you got? Uh, I got a first, or you got I first? got a bunch, so why? You got a shit ton? I okay, got a shit ton. Okay. Um, first, I want to thank all of the new listeners that we are getting from the promos that other podcasts are playing. Like they're, Hi, play, they're playing our promo and we're getting some new listeners. So thanks guys. We hope you enjoy it and we hope you continue to listen. And also a thank you to the podcast called the fall line. Um, they're helping us with how to record on Skype. Nice. Which we have no clue how to do. I don't know when we're going to actually do it. No, I but... talked. To, I talked to my friend Nuke, and we have. To, he's a truck driver, uh-huh. and we kind of like got to coordinate our schedules. And he's he's my age, but like six or seven months younger. And he likes wine, women, whiskey, and song at this point. So he goes to work and he goes to sleep in the garage with his friends. Okay, but night. does he know how to Skype? I don't know. I didn't. I don't care about the rest of it. Does he know how to Skype? (laughs) Well, I'm waiting until we actually get to figure out what we're doing to ask him. But anyway, we do have um, step by step instructions, and um, it was from the the Fall Line, which is a podcast that tells stories of the Southeast's marginalized missing people. It's like one one topic per season. So basically, it's like like if, if you're not a White girl with blonde hair, your story doesn't get out to the news if you're missing. Pretty much. Pretty much. So that's basically... That is so sad. And it is pathetic. It's really, really sad. So this podcast basically tells the story of missing people that are not, you know, the white, blonde-haired girl. Yes. So, yeah. So it's called The Fall Line. Check them out. And what else? Oh, apparently I sound like Ellen DeGeneres. I saw that. I I don't Uh, see it. That blows my mind. It's a compliment. So, hey, I will take it. I will take it. Okay, I don't see it. I don't hear it. I don't hear it either. But then, like, you know how, like, your own voice, you don't really... I'm slowly becoming used to my own voice from listening to us because... Right. um, I don't... How about when we first started? I was, like, so, like, ugh. Cringeworthy. 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 Yes, cringe is the word. We had no idea what we were doing, but... Advice to anybody out there, if you want to do something, don't feel bad that you can't do it perfectly the first time. Every master started as a beginner. Right. And me and Laura decided that we want to do this, and we prepared the best we could. And it, obviously, y'all got through the first three episodes and are still <laughs> with us. And uh, God bless you for that. Oh, Honest to God. Laura, I can't believe you said that. What? God bless you? God bless you. Well, that's what? That's a pagan... 
difficulty. Anyway. 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 I, I don't listen to what we're really, I just, never mind. What do you have? You said you have a lot of stuff. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Um, I found a new radio station. I don't, in, in Pittsburgh here. Um, I what was sitting waiting for you and it was 91.3. Okay. Which is? I have no idea. They never shouted out who they were and I got tired of waiting the for what? you. So I let myself in and waited on your porch and had so a beer. Okay, so what? About the radio station. They were playing the coolest blues music. Oh, and nice. Not only that. I should know what the station is, okay. but I don't. This dude's name was Big Daddy Wilson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and his song was called Bullfrog. And one of the Oh, re- is that the country station? No. This is this is this is like public radio or something here. 91.3. No, Anyway, one of the phrases that this dude is singing while he's singing the blues is... Who, Big Daddy who? Big Daddy Wilson. Cut him up and put him on the grill. And all I kept thinking was, Big Daddy, you can't eat that. It's not clean. Didn't you listen to us last week? Oh, my God. Would you say it was like 91.3? 91.3. You know, any people in Pittsburgh are probably like, it's this, it's this. W... (laughs) W W-Y-E-P? Yeah. W, yep. Yeah. I don't know. I, they just had a. It's of course it's Saturday. Yeah. And it was six o'clock. I'm waiting for you. And you said you'd be here at six. You weren't here till six thirty. But that's okay because I got to hang out on your really cool porch. But anyway, yeah, that, it's a really. I like the blues. It's and called W Y E P. I thought you were looking up Big Daddy Wilson. Nope, I was looking up ninety one point three. Okay. Um, I had very interesting conversation. Um, with Laura, who lives in Wales, she was very adamant and to tell me, you know, that they're not a part of England. Um, and Didn't you mention this last week? No. I think you did. No, I just mentioned I was talking to them. No. I swear to God you did. No. Nah. Well, I mentioned them, okay? Okay. But they educated me over this past week. They got, oh, a, they got okay. a kick-ass flag. It's, oh, okay. It's a dragon. And it's on green and white, and it's it, the dragon's tail is an axe. It, if you just got to look at the detail, it's kind of like okay. a Picasso like looking too. Okay. But the funny thing was is that Matt, who did our music, also lives yes, over there. hey Matt. And the uh, the morning I posted, I walked out of a restaurant, and there was a car. That, I swear to God, we talked about this. No, with the license plate. There was a license plate. I play. swear to God, either either I was I swear to God, I either had a dream or we talked about this in the previous episode. I swear no, to God. No, no, because I went to, to lunch with my dad on Thursday and that's when I snapped it and posted it. So what it. the hell am I thinking? I don't know. Maybe he got deja vu. I'm telling oh, you, this whole, I know. this whole week has been freaky crazy on I've had nothing but green oh, lights. How about how about on Sammy's birthday? You woke up. I woke up at the exact minute she was born. On her birthday. And I... Talk about, like, yes. the heebie-jeebies. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I had a nice conversation with these guys. And they just, you know, gave a thumbs up for the flag and stuff. We're everywhere. Right. Um, on the license plate. But I went to work that day, and I was talking to the lady. She doesn't follow us on Facebook, but she does listen to our show. And she just got back from Wales. From Wales, um, she was staying in a place like I hope I can say this. How would you say that? Carnarvon, Carnarvon. Oh, oh dear, that one. Car Car C A E R N A R F O N. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> but anyway, I'm looking on the map and I see that they have a holy island. And the capital of it is Holy Head, and I just I couldn't get the image out of my mind of right. Holy Head. I mean Jesus. Anyway, okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> Carol did inform me that um, I included her in the Bum First Club, and she was not in the Bum First Club. Oh, she got kicked out. Well, she voluntarily left because she wasn't born ass first. I wouldn't want to uh, be in that club if okay. I wasn't born ass first. Okay. Okay. Um, I did forget about the power guard and turbo shield masks. Uh, for, oh, for the gas masks, you mean? Right, because okay. remember I was saying the men had to shave? Right, okay. They ended up getting more expensive. They're called turbo shield and power guard. Okay, now were these like 
legit yes. masks or were they just some like jerry-rigged things no, that no, the cult these, made up? No, these were actual gas masks okay. made for so, people who had oh, okay. beards. And, I don't know how they worked. Um, my ex had one. We paid a lot of money for it. That's all okay. I know. And I did say, uh, no. Okay, I did that, did that, did that. Gosh. Um... Sarah also asked on Facebook about the significance of 613. She's, oh, yeah, I saw that. She's up to episode 10, and maybe I don't mention it enough, but... Well, we have a bunch of new listeners. We have to li- We had to live by the 613 perfect laws that the Creator gave us. And, and those are all in the Bible, correct? They're in the first five books of the okay. Bible, and they're either positive laws or they're negative laws. A positive law is something that you have to do. A negative law is something that you are forbidden from doing. But either way, you need to follow. Yes. Okay. Yes. And when you add them all up, there's 613 of them, and that's what we lived by. So, and I I would, I, I, you know, these random things come up. I'm watching Big Bang the other night. I love Big Bang. Oh, my God, so do I. And I... Really love the episodes where Leonard and Sheldon's mother are together. <gasps> oh, yeah. Those are my favorite episodes. And they were getting an episode I'd never seen before. Because, see, I don't watch it when it's on regularly. I catch up on right. Netflix or whatnot. Or it's, you know, it's on every it's night. It's like on one of those eight. rerun channels. Whatever. Right. Yeah. And Sheldon's mother and Leonard's mother get into this bickering battle. And... Leonard's mother um, wanted to know what they fed the lions while they were on the ark. And you know her in her condescending tone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, you know, Sheldon's mother, Mary, she says, she they fed the drowned bodies of the, of, of, of the dead sinners. So that's what the lions got fed on the ark was the naked bodies of the dead sinners. Oh my god, her Does character is so funny. That woman could say anything on that show. It's funny. I, I I just love the two of them together. So, moving on. Hey, we went. We got over fifteen thousand downloads. No way. Yes, we did. We have passed fifteen thousand. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you, guys. This was on Laura's bucket list, and I just kind of jumped into like. I don't know, have fun and maybe help. And this has surpassed anything we've ever dreamt of with the emails, the the Facebook interaction, the people that we see when we go to like, like them people who knew us when we went to that open casting call. Oh my God, that was wild. Yeah. That was wild. And we might have an announcement next week. If everything works out and something that I'm working on this week, we may have an announcement. I have no idea what you're talking yeah, you about. Did, we were talking about it on my side porch. I showed you. Oh, okay. <laughs> do, you not, do you know what I'm talking about now? I don't remember shit minute to minute, okay? okay. I, but we, we It's t- not written down in front of me. I wish, you know, and I'm holding this up like people can see through I the know. microphone. <laughs> no, but no, we, we, we had like a 20 minute conversation about it. Oh, for God's sake. We did. Well, then apparently next week you'll be surprised too. I, I'll be, I, I'm surprised every day. <laughs> Honestly, my mother calls me some days and reminds me of stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So anyway, we talked um, last week and sometimes we have trouble coming up with a topic. Sometimes we pull it out of the Kool-Aid pitcher. Sometimes one just naturally right. pops up. So I agonizingly thought about this one for probably two days before I informed you um, what the topic was to see if you had any material to add in. And tonight's topic, tonight, today, whenever you listen, um, is the people and the relationships out there. And that is going to cover an awful lot. Um, I really didn't think I'd have that much. And as you can see, my homework... Book I can is see. Full. And, and it's color coded. You have different color markers and pens. No, I just got drunk and lost the pen I was using and grabbed a different <laughs> one. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, see, I like to think that it's color coded. Okay, it's color coded. <laughs> that, that's what it is. No, your, your version's better. I'm just honest. I... Your version's better. Your version's better. <laughs> Are we going to talk about the Kool Aid? Oh, I forgot about See, that. See, what, what, your head is up your ass. I, tonight it is. It's oh past beer 30 and I'm on my first beer. Come okay. on. Okay. Okay. Just don't spill it. 
like you normally do. I don't have a drippy sippy, so <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't spill beer except oh, in my pants. Oh my god. Okay, so moving on to the Kool Aid. Kool Aid. It's Kool-Aid. an easy recipe. We have it's called the Southern Schoolboy. Ooh. Does it, it get is, spanked? <sighs> This is not the kinky podcast. Well, no, but like the Catholics <laughs> would spank the altar oh, boys. Oh, the nuns and... with like with a ruler, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. This is, um, let's see here, four ounces of grape Kool-Aid. And grape? One, grape. Oh, so we're pretending it's wine. And one ounce of Southern Comfort. Oh, so see, it is a, it is a, 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 a Catholic, you know. It's a yeah. Southern schoolboy. Okay. And it's not bad. I can't drink Southern Comfort. Why? That was the very first thing I got messed up on. And my mother purposely did not come home. I had a curfew. Okay. And I got so wasted on Southern Comfort that, like, they had to help me home. I was oh, my God. Probably 16. Uh, oh, God, my kids listen to this. Damn it. Um, Shit. Anyway, well, I, they're older than sixteen, so one is of drinking age. The other one, it, it, it wouldn't matter. He wouldn't hear this anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, Southern Comfort and Kool Aid was the first thing. Uh, literally, the even back and then. I don't even remember what flavor it was. Oh my god! But when I got home, there were three doorknobs. <laughs> I've never again in my life I'm seen sure triple. There were. I'm trying to stick the key in, and it's it's. <laughs> Even one eyeball, I couldn't do it. <laughs> That's when my mother came downstairs and opened the door and demanded to know why I was drunk off my ass and why it was I was late for curfew. And yeah, good time. Not pretty. All right. So apparently you're not going to have any of this drink. Oh gosh, no. And we're not going to discuss the peach schnapps. That if we uh, ever okay, come that... up with something with peach schnapps, well, we'll we discuss won't. that we story. Won't. I mean, this drink is okay. I like it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like it, but I prefer the ones that have the vodka. Vodka is always the go-to. It's so always, if you guys yeah. don't like our drink, you know, just substitute vodka. Always vodka and Kool Aid. You don't. You can't uh, you go can't, wrong. That was always my go-to. You can't I go mean, wrong. vodka's cheap. You can change the flavor of by changing the flavor of the Kool Aid. That's Kool-Aid. right. There you go. And your kids get the non-alcoholic version, so that keeps them happy too. So everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. Happy, Mama. Hey, if Mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. That's right. So. Um, I, I really didn't know where to start with this. Well, do you want, how do you want to do this? Do you want me to like give you a relationship and then you can go on with it? Or do you just want to start? I'm just going to give you some basic information. Okay. It was a closed community. Meaning? Meaning that there were really no outsiders when you for services anything there was just wasn't going to be random people showing up like but it wasn't closed church. physically like you were not in a compound it wasn't closed physically in the end we were in the okay. end the big huge gates were always closed now from what i understand they so have, there was a wall too i told you that fence i hit all of those oh the wire fence with the barbed wire okay yeah. okay got you okay. yeah but a closed community also meaning the fact of, I might work for you, but you would never be my friend. If I could give you literature and get you to go to services, we could be friends. If not, like your family members, you were supposed to present them with literature and stuff. And if they didn't warm up to it or want to be a part of it, then you're supposed to cut them out of your life. Oh, alrighty. I, yeah. I I had a really good friend there that um, she lived with her boy. She ran away from home and lived with her boy's friend's family. They, the boyfriend's family moved to the cult when she was about 15, 16 years old. She had five kids, never had a driver's license, never possessed the social oh security my card. God. Has no birth certificate. Wait, she was, she went into the cult? Or she, she was left, born there. No, she was like 15, 16. How did she not have a social security number? She ran away from home. But That's, you have one when you're born. Now you do. I applied for my social security card when I started working. Didn't you? No, I had one the day I was born. Not me. I had to apply for one when I started working. That's what oh, most people do. Oh, maybe things have changed. They have. I was presented with a social security card when my children left the hospital. And I found that odd. But we're not going to get into right. that. Because oh, this is okay. not a show about that. It's not a social security number podcast. No, no, no. Because <laughs> oh, that'd be so exciting. Um, 
Yeah, you were supposed to shun non-members. Like, if your mom just wasn't into it, wasn't getting it, right? you slowly cut off contact. Okay. And that's why she was trapped there. She ran away from home 15, 16. Here it is, you know, 20 years later, five kids later, she has nobody. Where the hell are you going to go? She has nobody to call. Oh, my she, God. She's never had a job. And, yeah. So, it, it's... Is she still there? No, thankfully. Oh, they're thank gone. Okay. All her kids are gone. Oh, good. Um, but being there, we like we've discussed before, we also talked different. There were words we didn't say or substitution words. And talking with an outsider, you could always tell because they use the words the words you weren't allowed to that use. You weren't allowed to use. Okay. So if you were at work, you obviously were able to talk to the co-workers pertaining to work. Yeah, but you couldn't but that say was happy. It. You would have to say joyous. You couldn't say happy. You'd have to say joyous. You'd still have So you still had to use or not use right. words. Okay. Correct. Okay. So you ended up sounding like a basic idiot. Right. Because okay. to this day my one says son says, What occurred? What occurred? Yeah, so anybody Yeah, so anybody walking around an office that says what occurred, people are going to look at you like what the hell is wrong with that person? Why did that why did you pick that word? It's I mean, it's a totally acceptable They're just gonna word. They're going to be like what the hell's that? It's a totally acceptable word, but it's not one that most of us would use, use. in America. Right. What happened, not what occurred. Right. So, the closed community, there was a lot of um you could lie to non-members. That's how they got away with a lot of stuff illegally. So isn't like one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not, like... Do you even know the Ten Commandments? No, but I mean like... Thou shalt not lie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. it's, a southern, it's a southern comfort. Hey, no, by but, the way, I have a problem with the fact that God did not put thou shalt not fucking rape in the top Ten Commandments. Don't say his name with a shitty attitude. But it's okay. Well, you that know. would be on like honor your neighbor or... Whatever. No, in all actuality, God condones rape. I, I, you can be, you sold to the person that raped you. Um, I'll have to come up with the uh, scriptures for find that. I'll find, find it for next that. time. Look, I'm writing it in my homework book. Oh, in a different color pen. No, it's in blue. <laughs> all right. So wait, I was going to ask you something. What was I going to ask you? I don't know. I'm not in your head. Oh my God! What was I going to ask you? About the working and the relationships. Work relationships, you could be nice and cordial to people, but you weren't. But that's about it. Right. So, like, what if, like, it's like at lunchtime. Could you go out to lunch with them, or could you sit with them in the lunchroom, or did you have to hide? You're not supposed to. You're supposed to sit at your cubicle, or, like I've said, there were a couple big corporations that a lot of us worked at. Right. So we all had somebody to hang out with. Oh, okay. Um, But you were still, like, you weren't... You were you weren't talking with the other people. You were like in your own little group. They're probably like those bunch of weirdos. They don't talk to anybody. Yeah, that's that was it. Was that kind of like what it was? Pretty much, and we all dress differently. Um, it, it, have you ever been the reason for a role? No. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't specifically the reason for the rule, but I was grouped in. You with... mean sort of like you know like no wearing essential oils. To work because they stunk so bad. Oh, I mentioned that God. last week. Oh yeah, some of them were horrible. Oh, some of them are real earthy and real nasty, and people didn't want to. I don't blame them. And then, of course, you know the people so, that were wearing the oils went to management and said, "Well, their cologne, their perfume offends me." So, coming out of this, you know, big huge management, you know, they're banning everything left and right, like cologne, perfume, yep. oils, yep. whatever, everything. Yep. Because oh people gosh. benched. But some of that stuff is really strong. You don't want to be smelling that. It, well, even even perfume. Like some people just like bathe they in it. They douse in it. It's they disgusting. in it. Yeah. It throws my mother into an asthmatic attack. She could die from being in an elevator with somebody with walks in and bathed per- in Right, it. right. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. Um, Moving on. I wanted to say that along with... When we joined, we were living in South Carolina. Okay. And we spent the Sabbath with a local elder, his wife, and his kids. Did you know them or did you just kind of like we met latch them. on to them? We met them at our first feast. We were introduced to them at okay. the feast because we lived 10 miles from them. Okay. 
And so we would get together during the Sabbath and listen to last week's tape. I mean, yeah, back that far. It was on tape. It was a tape. It was a tape. And we'd have Sabbath meal together. And living outside of the group is very different because you don't have to adhere to the rules as much. Or no one's going to call you out on it. Okay, you mean like not living right on the property? Or living down where they are. Okay. You're not going to run... Like, I'm wearing Satan's sister's shirt tonight. I have a sleeveless shirt on. Oh, look, so do you. (gasps) We have to take a picture after this of our (laughs) sweatshirts. But I, I living in South Carolina, it was hot. And I could go to work without Kenny knowing in a tank top. Oh, okay. And come home and have a blouse over it as if I wore that all day. Right. Yeah, right. But living where we were living, you couldn't do that because somebody would see you and you'd get turned in. Gotcha. So, and then once you move there, it's a different... They used to say it's not a religion, it's a way of life. And it was so... It would be like you going to a foreign country... And adapting to what they're wearing, what they're eating, okay, what they're reading. You would be completely submersing yourself in a completely different culture. If that makes any kind yeah, of sense. Yeah, no, you. it does. It makes sense. So, um, what would you like to talk about for a bit? Well, for relationships, how I have one of the... Um, the pamphlet thingies that you have for the, it's called the parenting manual. Oh yes. Wonderful, informative shit. So maybe we can talk about the relationship between kids and parents. All right. Um, let me see here. Um, um, let me look. What does it say here? You're umming, umming. I know I'm looking. It says, what is parenting? Um, teaching of a child. It might not necessarily be your own. There was um, people that were raising other people's kids. Okay. A um, provider providing for a child's needs. A guide, give foundation and prepare one for the future. And a disciplinarian, give structure and correction to remain on track. To remain on track. Yes, yes. Don't spare the rod because you'll spoil the child. Oh, so they like... You could, like, beat your kid. Well, you you could could beat beat your your spouse. That's right. Come on. What's going to stop you from beating your kids? Oh, my God. Okay. What is my duty as a parent slash caretaker? Um, There is a specific path the child should follow. There you go. Well, of course, you read out of the children's book every week, practically. That's true. That's true. He or she must be trained repeatedly. The trainer must also be trained, like a seal. I guess, like, these are, like, circus animals. Well, of course. And know the path a child must follow. So they're like training. Like everything's train the child. Tra- like, it's everything like a circus was, animal. Like, everything was classes. Everything was repetition. Everything was phrases. And if it's not forever, we don't want it. And it was just crazy. Okay, this one, I, I like this. This is kind of funny. It says, gender, females will have different relationships with parents than males. Children don't need to discuss purity laws with parents of the opposite sex. Correct. You're not God allowed. God forbid. You're not allowed. And like, if you were there and you had a boy, right? And the dad isn't there, I couldn't like talk you couldn't to them talk about to your what da- is sex. I could talk- not educate no. my own child. You could not educate your son on sex. He would be sent to an elder or a deacon. Or oh, that's just fantastic. Something like that. So, and you would have no idea what your child is actually being taught because you're not allowed to ask. Wait, 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 repeat that? What? You would have no idea what your child learned at the deacon or the elders. Oh, hell no. Hell no. as a mother, your son is above the age of 13, and you're not allowed to ask his comings, goings. I, I mean, most people did, and most people didn't leave, you know, sex up to the elders. I knew a few single women there, though, that, yeah, their boys were educated. Oh, that's a great big hell no. I, I don't know what to tell you. I have, to this day, I have no idea what they were taught. I, I have none. So, and you said some of them were pedophiles, so I can only imagine what some of them were taught. I, I've heard rumors, but I'm not getting into any of that because I haven't heard the same thing twice. 
It's just, I mean, some people get bitter when they leave and will say oh, things. Oh, they could, right, okay. The things that I talk about, I either know firsthand, it's from a reliable source, it's not just some ex-member that contacted me that I have no idea who they are. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Yes. Okay, so now there's something here. Would you like to hear what they're saying about dressing modestly and teaching your children? I probably don't, but they probably <laughs> do. Oh, no, you want to hear this. Uh, parents should also teach their children as soon as possible to dress modestly and privately. It is to the shame of the teachers when nakedness is exposed. Oh, gotta cover up the nakedness. The world today is well trained in exposing nakedness in dress to attract and entice people to fornicate and commit adultery. So nakedness is equated with adultery. Everything is what the hell? everything is equated with oh adultery. Oh my god. The 12 tribes were also trained in Egypt in these wait. The 12 tribes were also trained in Egypt in these same enticements and turned back to them uncovering themselves and bringing the sin of fornication and adultery back into their lives when Moses tested them by being away too long. Yep, sin What the ever loving hell? I'm telling you you've never read the Bible. Read the first no, 5 I've books got and the you'll Bible be a this bullshit. This is like uh, I don't know what to tell you. Cover up that nakedness. I don't know what to tell you. Um, everything, it, it was like a, oh, and I mentioned the bullfrog song earlier. From from Big Bob, Big Daddy, Big... Big Daddy Wilson. Okay. Don't you remember anything? <laughs> uh, it, it was like being a frog in a pot there. With, you put a frog in a pot of water, it'll sit there. Did you just burp? I was hoping to let that pass by. <laughs> you just burped right in the microphone. <laughs> you didn't smell it, did you? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, God, that is so gross. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry. Anyway, carry I on. You thought that was... I'm not going to... You know me. I'm not going to let that pass. I thought it was going to slide. Hell no. No, I don't remember what I'm saying. Big Daddy, Big... Big Daddy Wilson. Um, being there was like being a frog in a pot. You can put a frog in a pot of water and you can turn it on on the stove. Okay. Turn it on very, very low. Oh, and they heat. don't realize. And they will the... boil themselves to death because it's just a little more heat. Little just more. A little more. Just a little more. And I said this in another episode that the clothing kept, you know, it's just another inch, just another inch, just another inch. And... Before you know it, you're covered over. I mean, I, I could have worn this when, when I first got out. there. Okay. Yes, this would have been deemed acceptable. Do you see how you can, you can't right. see in, in... And the straps are like an inch yes. wide or whatever. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. But then it went to... I know you guys can't see, but I'm showing Laura. <laughs> it went to here. No, Debbie, they can. And then it went to here. And then it went to here. So it's just kind of like you had to have a little bit of a sleeve, then a short sleeve, uh, then a whatever. Uh, yeah. It okay. just kept getting longer and longer and longer. So, but everything was like that. Everything was always changing, but it was in such small increments. That it didn't really phase you. It did when you look back and when... Well, but I mean, at the time, though, it was just kind of like, oh, whatever. It's just another inch. It just... That's like um, when the clothing issues started, we all kind of had a feeling a few years into it that it would be a separation of the men and women. Okay. And I left two weeks before the wall went up. They completely separated the no, men and women. No, you're talking about the wall that separated the men and the women. Yes. Okay. Yes. But when I first got there, I, I showed you a picture. We're going to post the picture on social media. That it was seriously a place of love. Everybody hugged everybody. Everybody shalomed everybody and Shabbat shalomed. And yeah, people you didn't even know. You're just walking by grinning and you scream Shabbat shalom. And What's that mean? I mean, I know what shalom means, but. Peace on the Sabbath. Peace. Okay. Shabbat Shalom was only said on the Sabbath. Gotcha. But other than that, you'd Shalom, shalom everybody. everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like Shamil, Shlomazel, oh, Shalom, 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 yeah. Shalom, 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 Shalom. I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All, right. All right. Back to the parents and the kids. Okay. Explain this to me. It says, protecting your child from God worship. Watch the toys and books you buy them. Give them explanations as necessary. What kind of toys would they not be allowed to play with? I don't remember that. I you just I mean, does leave. that sound 
Right. I mean, does that sound video familiar? games? Video games weren't allowed. For okay, the I mean, most I can part. understand like some books and all that. I can get that, but toys? Like, what kind of toys? If you couldn't give, I don't remember. I'm gonna have to I got ask you members. Stumped. You got me stumped. Here, let me write this down, and you read something. Ask X members. Okay, and it says for under protecting your child, inform them of the pools of this pools. P U L L S. Inform them of the pools of this world and the evil in it. Oh, they don't want you going to get Pokemon cards because everybody has getting Pokemon cards or whatnot, and you're being pulled into oh a worldly. worldly things. Oh, okay. You're not supposed to go with the fat. You know what? I'm really surprised they didn't make up their own like cult cards. I do believe that the toys you weren't supposed like you could have your kid could have like a di- like a kitchen set. Okay. Because it's a small version of what's real. Okay. But maybe they couldn't have, like, action... Fi- I don't remember. <sighs> what good am I tonight? I was just going to say, what the hell good are you? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, well, what else can you tell us about the relationship between parents and children? That was pretty much... Most people didn't get into the relationship with other people's parents and children just because... Th- they don't belong to you. Okay. So most things... Other than the whole talking about sex thing. That would be from like an elder. That would... See, I didn't even really remember that because I was never in that situation. And I never would have been because he's still there. Oh, okay. So your ex talked to your sons. Well, he would have. He would. Okay. That would be a question for Jesse. I think Jesse did tell me at one point... That his dad did give him the sex talk, but it was more of a, I, like, I don't know, directions from Ikea, okay? Oh, uh, okay. Kiss woman, dick gets stiff, insert, back and forth, feel Like, good. no emotional. I don't or, know. Okay. I, I'll have to ask him the next time I talk okay. to my son. But, okay. Uh, now, look, I'm going to have to write something else down. See? Ask Jesse. What else you got in, in, in the ask propaganda? Ask Jesse about sex. That, <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> I know. That's pretty much all it has in here about for the children. Um, and also it says to make sure you play sermon tapes for them, encourage them to listen and re-listen to them. Um, oh, yeah, 24-7. And oh, show them the endless benefits of keeping God's law. Yes. Oh, and then at the very bottom, with a little like arrow, start now. Well, yeah, everything is now, now, now. You haven't been doing it. You're way the late. The apocalypse is now. The, the end of time is now. starting. The apocalypse is starting. Um, I can tell you that everything again kept changing, and the relationships between men and women was a constantly changing thing. Okay. We were allowed to sleep in the same bed all the time. We just couldn't have sex. When I was having my period. Now, was this married men and women or yes. single? What if you were single? Were you... Why would you be sleeping with a man if you were single? <sighs> okay, you're, playing you're the devil. Call. Hello. Playing devil's advocate. Here. And that's how I was telling you about the rape thing. That's how a lot of elders got their young wives. Um, I had a friend that she watched one of the elders come in her window. What? And sleep with her sister. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. The elder like was a creeper and came in the window. Yeah, creeper what? in the window and had sex with her sister, and because he defiled her, she became his wife. No, yep. you are shitting me. I am not. And um, another friend of mine, she was, they were wanting to marry her off to somebody else. But she, Lock your windows, she folks. She wanted to be with her husband that she's with now. They're both gone, okay? Well, they were wanting to set her up with somebody else. Okay. Well, she wanted to be with this guy. So they literally went and had sex. They went and both confessed that they fornicated with each other. They were unfit. So they had to get married. Yeah. And that's how they kept her from being married off to other people she didn't want to be married to. Oh, my God. I I still can't get past the fact that an elder, like, crept through a window. Um, Quite a few of them did. And didn't they learn, like, lock your windows? I don't know, because it was always considered, you know, an honor to be... What, to be raped by an elder? To, to be an elder's wife. And remember oh remember my, my friend I told you that almost died in childbirth? Yes. She's in that medical journal and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her husband took the baby 
from the hospital because my friend can't barely move. She's right. almost dead. She's like half dead. He gives the baby to an elder's wife whose ba- other baby was born like a month before. So she's lactating. Oh, God. Everybody, the entire feast, kept telling him how lucky he was because his daughter is being nursed by an elder's wife. Like it was. Oh, for God's sake. Like it was some. Like the child was going to get special people powers believe or that something. shit. Oh, it was the big talk. The Magical fact, breast milk. Uh, the fact that, well, I, I guess the elder's wife's breast milk was more important than mine or yours or the common people. But yeah, they kept telling him how lucky he was to have an elder's wife giving her breast milk to his daughter. Oh, for God's sake. And, and, uh, relationships. I, yeah. So did this kid turn out like extra special since it was. I don't know. I still keep up with my friend. I'm being a smart ass. Her kids and stuff. Oh my God, that is so bizarre. So bizarre. So bizarre. That is so bizarre. Oh my God. There's so much bizarre shit that went on out there. And I'm sorry. Crack open that beer. I got to crack a beer and it's going to make a big spike. And I I got it all the way away from the microphone. Ready? One, two, three. Okie doke. There you go. Anyway. Any other like It's late here. Any other creepy stories about like. How that kid was so lucky. No, just random things. I mean, the relationships between men and women, it constantly changed. Down to the point of there was one feast that one of the elders announced that they had been doing research. And I guess... Oh, yeah. I don't know if it was the big man himself or a different elder who gave it. But they announced that it was unlawful for a man to wear a wedding ring. Because why? Because when you wear wedding rings, I belong to you. You belong to me. Okay. A man does not belong to one wife. He has many wives. Oh. Okay. So, but the woman had to wear the wedding ring. Yes. Because she belongs to him. Girl, my own heart dropped into the heels of my feet as I watched my husband's hand come up. And him remove his wedding ring and just simply turn to me and hand it to me like it was a used tissue. And the feeling, I mean, the feeling of the oppression, the sadness throughout the entire sanctuary. You could hear women. Oh, wait, so they all had to do it during it, like at one time, they all it removed was their during rings. the service. Oh, my God. During a feast when all 25... Did they come around and collect the rings or no, what did the they men, do? No, the men just handed the rings to their wives. And that was the end of it. Oh my God. I, I actually have my set of rings at home. We'll have to post it. So. Oh my God, that is so sad. It was one of the saddest that... moments I've ever felt in my entire life. A collection of... I mean, you've been at a concert and everything's good and you're happy and right. the crowd... This was the complete opposite. This was such a wave of fucking sadness. Now, did did any of the men feel sad about it? Yep. And they were just doing it because they had to? I have no idea. I mean, I they, think... I mean you didn't know any any of them Okay, that felt look, sad. I'm going to write that down for next week, too. Any men sad? You know what I mean? Because, like, you know, I would think that some of them would follow the rules, but they would be like, you know, I really still want to wear this ring, but I can't. Look. When they what? tell you that you got to chop part of your dick off when you show up, I, I really don't think taking a ring off is going to be that hard. Well, but I mean, for some men, though, it might be symbolic. They might, you know what I'm saying? I just, I'm curious to know if any of the guys... I'll ask around, but I know of no men that had no problem pulling that thing off. and hand, They just, it was like one fluid motion. It was like they almost choreographed it. I, Unbelievable. <laughs> Mine didn't even, like, look at it before he took it off. Now, was there any warning of this? Or was no. this just in the middle of the service? Of like, the oh, hey, by the way. Yep. That's how Get out. they used to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. By the way, uh, you can't eat this. You can't have this. You can't do this. You have to do this this way now. Oh, my God. But that was probably the saddest moment I remember. I can't even imagine. It, collective sadness. Because it's kind of like they're not just throwing the ring away. They're throwing you away. No, you know, I mean, like they're not throwing me away because he owns me. He's just taking I off. I forgot. He's just taking off the symbol of I ownership. own him. Ah, I am not. I am okay. not his equal. 
That's I have right. I have no right to put a ring on his finger because he is gotcha. a man. Gotcha. Got it now? I understand now. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Um, th- the extra wives, that created a lot of problems in places. I had a friend whose sister was an elder, and he took a second wife. And he put up a 12-foot fence in his backyard and his second wife lived in a tent behind the 12 foot fence. Oh dear God. Yes. Now when you, when you first joined, did people have second wives or is that something that also kind of like evolved? No, they, um, all, some of them already did, but oh, okay. it was something that evolved more, more. as it went okay. on. The rules changed. Like I said, I could sleep with my ex in the same bed while well, I have my period, but we just couldn't fool around. Gotcha. What not. Then it went to, we had to have separate bedrooms for the unclean time. Okay. It eventually got to where, say you're married to Kenny also. Okay. He has a house, you have a house, I have a house. Okay. That way if he's not at your house, you can in your mind think, oh, he's at home. But you're not allowed to call him or go over there. So, so basically, yeah. So it's like he owns you. You can't track him down. You're not supposed to. And that way in your own... But you could be sneaky and you can go try to find uh, where he is. Lots of people did. I don't know what to tell you. But as a wife, you really had no no right to know where your husband was or what he was doing in the end. Bullshit. That way, he could be as married to as many wives as he wants. You'd never know. So now, obviously, this is like a really stupid question, but... No questions are <laughs> stupid. The only stupid question is the one that is not asked. Or the one that I'm going to ask. Okay. <laughs> this obviously was not legal in that state. That was just... No. It was just, like, cult legal. Yes. Okay. So, you know, if he were to go out of the state to a different one, he doesn't have two wives. No. I only know of two instances where people left with multiple wives in the... Man and the two wives in both instances left, and none of them are together anymore. But I mean, like, like when you did leave, it's not legal, it's not valid. No, but the cult used to get away with it because a man, he can have as many girlfriends as he wants. There's nothing that says that a man can't have be seeing 15 women and right no but I'm ta- but I'm talking about say they left the cult okay right. they left the cult this guy has two wives right well as soon as he leaves the cult it's not legal it's not legal so he ha- does not have two wives what would they do in that situation or would they they probably would just stay in the cult i mean no, but I'm just... i had two that i that i know of that left okay so what happened when they left i mean uh, they... since was the, the, like the first wife is the one that they probably ended really... up, The one family I know of, they left, and they got two separate houses. So the man would spend, like, every other night. Okay. And it didn't work out for anybody involved. Gee, imagine that. <sighs> imagine <sighs> that. That's why the cult has the man have his own house. Oh that God. way, you have no idea where he is. He could be at his own house, or he could be at my house, or it could be at his buddy's house. You have no clue. So... Well, pretty much, if he's not with you, you can probably bet that he's with the other wife i don't know i he could have five wives for all you know and the women had no problem with this a lot of them had a lot of problem um but my, it was just like you had no choice is that you, what it you was had no you had no choice okay and in the end like i personally had no clue kenny was even looking at a second wife he knew me well enough to keep it hidden okay but he cheated on me um, when he was working out of town like eight hours away. And a friend of mine was living at the company housing because her husband had a DUI and couldn't drive. Okay. So she was the driver for him. And I showed up one day for services and I had been crying, totally unrelated. And they're like, oh, so you know what's going on? I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And that's when I found out, you know, Kenny was going to take another wife. And it was like, what? Yeah, don't think so. I had always thought in my own head that I would play along with it and be okay with it. That he would probably let me in on it. But You mean if he was thinking about it? Right. Okay. Because I always told him, you know, well, if you're interested in somebody, let me know. You know, I 
like to get to know them, we can babysit each other's kids while you go out with either one of us. But and doing it in theory is different than reality. I was playing along knowing that if he ever wanted to take another wife, I was the fuck out of there. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he, like I said, he must have known me better than I thought because he oh, never let me you. in on it. Okay. It was a complete shock to find out what. Yeah, that was the straw that broke the camel's back that I That's when you here. left. I, I can't stay anymore. I, I would have killed myself. I probably would have committed suicide if I would have had, if I had nowhere to go. Oh my God. Oh my God. So the women basically, it wasn't. It wasn't like these women were all happy living together, ha- like sharing their husband. They were just basically had no choice for the most part. Only the two women who showed up that were together and they shopped for a husband that would accept both of them. Oh, okay. Okay, we discussed this. Right. Um, I would also like to say that there was an unwritten rule and it really wasn't discussed that, see, the reason why a man can have so many wives Because Mm -hmm. he can have sex with all of them, and there's no disease spread because it's all within the same. Now, does the cult know how diseases are spread? Apparently not. They don't even realize that bats aren't birds. Come on. Go ahead. Seriously? I'm just making conversation here. Anyway, um, (sighs) say you decided that you wanted to marry Kenny. Okay. Kenny wanted you. Okay. And we're considered the same family. Me and you could actually be together without him. It was just an unwritten rule. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Right. Because me and you are, if he's already screwing both of us, we're not going to be spreading any extra diseases. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because it's all one family and all that. Right. That, yes. And that's why a man is only supposed to marry virgins (sighs) so that he keeps himself disease free. Oh, for God's sake. But yet he's allowed to go and screw whoever he wants. He's not allowed to, but, but he, he does. I'm sure he does. He did. Yeah, I don't know what to tell uh, you on that A bunch one. of bullshit. There's a lot of bullshit there. We've talked about bullshit. There's a whole hell of a lot more bullshit. We could. We should have named the podcast This Is Bullshit. No, because I got the hell out. <laughs> I really wanted to name it I Got the Fuck Out. Yeah, but that would have been more difficult to I, tell people about. I don't about. really think that, you know, yeah. we're going over real no, big, so. No, no. I do think we should, me and you should get shirts that say I got the fuck out, though. <laughs> I do. I do. I really do. Um, I, as always, asked a few people about... Um, their experiences of being there and I always get unique answers. Um, I had one woman tell me that when she left, she knew her children were going to be going to school. And like I said, it, what occurred? What occurred? Cause you guys homeschooled. Right. Okay. Well, most little children aren't running around going, what occurred? Oh what happened? my God. She actually had to like make her children say these words. And at first they were like hesitant and and because it was evil to say like a God or goddess's name or whatever. Happy. The word happy. Oh my God. You know, and she said she remembers, you know, they were frightened to say it at first. So she started saying it and jumping around. And next thing you know, they're all jumping around, dancing, singing, happy, 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 (laughs) happy. And yeah, that was a great dance. I wish people could have seen it. I, (laughs) oh man um another friend of mine said that in the last few years that she was there she stopped making friends because you make friends you get to know somebody you have fun together and then they leave oh man that makes sense it just is soul crushing when because i myself had i spent 10 years there I had a lot of people that came and went in my life. And when they don't show up at the next feast, you know they're gone. You know they're gone. Or if they're in town living there and suddenly they're not coming to service anymore, their phone's disconnected, they packed up and left. Now, did a part of you ever think like, oh, good for them, they got out? Or were you not there yet at that point? Um, you get to it at that point. I mean, but was I, there ever a time though that you were like, "Oh, thank God they got out." I never thank God, but, but yeah, oh, you know what I mean, smart ass. You've been godding this up this you entire know, time. You smart ass. What I mean, like, did you ever think that? Oh, they're lucky they got out. Uh, or it's about time. I'm so happy for them. 
Yes. In the very, very end, I like I stated, I, I really wanted our family to leave as a family. And you can't wonder, like, what would have happened with my kids if I, you know, if he would have left with us. Right. But I always wanted us to leave as a family, and we didn't. So, but, yeah, I stopped making friends towards the end also because it just hurt too much. Anything else? really sad. No, no, I do want to do a two-parter on this, do you think? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I can come up with a ton more stuff. I mean, it's like high school never ends there. <laughs> you got your you got your cool kids, which are the elders and their wives, and you know, and people just want to hang out with them because they're, they're elders cool. and they're, they're the, wives. The, they're like cheerleaders, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> the bitch I love to hate. Oh, yeah. oh, well, yeah. So we need to do a two parter because we need to get into that in the next episode because we're almost at an hour. Well, okay, um, I. What do you think? I I just would like to say that um, everybody does come to that moment um, in the cult that nobody is coming to save you. This life is 100% yours. You're responsible That has to be scary as hell at first. When I came to that realization that no one was coming to save me, I had to save myself. That had to be scary as hell, though. It, It was like a punch in the gut. In iron bands around your chest, I couldn't breathe and thought, holy fuck, what's my next move? And that's where I'm going to leave it with that because that's a whole other story of you can't just walk away. You have to plan. No, because that was 10 years out. of your life. That's. Yes. And you do. You have to plan on getting out. I mean, I had really no access to the money. By then, Kenny had taken access of... Was your name even on the bank account? Or... No, I had my name on nothing. I didn't own... That's for most women, right? No. Yeah. You okay. own nothing. You own nothing. Um, my one friend, they adopted one of the kids from the mom that left. Okay? Okay. The dad couldn't take care of the kids. And that's why they said caretaker in there. But... Oh, okay. The dad... He had money and stuff, but on the actual adoption papers, he didn't list his wife. That way, if she ever tried to leave and take the girl, she'd be considered kidnapping. Oh, my God. And What a little Weasley piece of shit. She died there. I, she died there. The girl is doing really, really, really good. Um, I saw pictures posted the other day from somebody else. She just graduated from college. Very happy for her. Yes. Good for her. I, I am so how happy. Did, how did the woman die? Do you know? Um, I don't know. She claimed to have had rabies forever. Like, she got bit what? by a raccoon. She was crazy. She claimed she was bit by a raccoon like 15 years before that and contracted rabies. But she's like only one of three people in the world that has lived with rabies. Um, this was before the age of information and I have before the internet when people could be like, you're full of shit. Exactly. So I have no idea. Apparently I left, she died years later and everybody said she finally succumbed to the rabies. She succumbed (laughs) to the rabies. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, is there anything else you would like to add? Pertaining to the cult? No. Mm. I think we have some good stuff for the next episode. Like the part two. Okay. Well, guys, as always, it's fun. Um, You may have to plan to get the hell out, but I did. And I think we have a um, um, A promo. promo. Um, 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 A promo. I'm trying. (laughs) I'm sweating to death. I know. This is is the only room in my house with no air conditioning. I'm buying these things that they're neck cooler. I have them. I have them in the freezer. Why don't we have these? Because I asked you the last time and you said, no, I don't need one. I don't recall this. You don't recall jack shit. <laughs> You're like, I got nothing. I, I got nothing. Okay. Man. So then just, okay, just listen. Okay. So there is a podcast called A Paranormal Chicks. Isn't that a cool title? Paranormal? As, as in, in both. Yeah. Oh, so uh, it's a double, it's, it's, a, it's a pun on top of yes, itself. Yes. Okay. A Paranormal Chicks. I got, I yes. like it. I like they it. They are on Twitter at the A. APC, as in a paranormal chicks, the APC podcast. And it says, We are a pair of normal chicks who talk about abnormal things. 
Nice. And I listened to their episode eight that was called Traveling Torture Chamber and Waverly Hills. I didn't spill anything today. Just listen to this. I know, but I'm just telling you, I was proud of that moment, and I listened to them, and they are good. Okay, so they what they do is they have two different stories. One is like a true crime, and then one is a paranormal story. So this episode eight, um, the first story was a serial killer who was a truck driver, which, oh, convenient. I'm sure there's lots of them. Oh, how convenient is that? You go and you drop off a load of stuff at Walmart, kill someone, get back on the highway. Oh, no. Get no this. one knows anything. Get this. The, if I ever need to dispose of a body, do you know where I'm going to dispose of it? Tell the world. Sure, where? They'll never find it. You travel the highways, and where it becomes divided, and they have them huge chunks of land in between the divided highway. Oh, yeah. There's no, no ever... animals going over there to dig up the body. There's not going to be any hunters over there. No one's going to see the massive amount of flies. Did you ever? Well, if you watch any of those shows on, like, was it Discovery ID or whatever the hell that channel is, there's so many truck drivers that are killers because it's so easy. I'm sure. It's so easy. Oh, shit. So anyway... This episode, yes. everyone give it a listen. It's about a serial killer who's a truck driver. Then it says they look into the history and the hauntings of the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Ooh. Nice. We Ooh. need to go look up we, uh, up at Woodville. There's a um, 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 a graveyard from all the crazy there's, people. There's actually a, um, I guess sanatorium is what they used to call it, up in uh, Newcastle. It's like an hour from Pittsburgh. They give tours. It's supposed to be haunted, and they give tours. Nice. We might have to go do that. Okay. Well, we got to go find the graveyard up at Woodville first. That's Where's, closer. Where's Woodville? Across from Chartier's Valley High School. Oh, okay. Right across the street. That used to, My mother used to work there when it was the Nut House. The no, nut my house. mother worked the at Mayview. The Nut House? Mayview. My mother worked at Mayview. It was a nut house. Very nice. The Nut House. A lot of squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, um, listen to the oh, promo. Oh, good God. And I can't wait till next week. These weeks kill me. I know. I look so forward to this. I know. I know. So, hey, give a Paranormal Chicks a listen. And till the next time, guys, um, this was... I, I got, got the, the hell, hell out. out. I'm Laura. I'm Debbie. And we'll, we'll you're like, talk at you later. <laughs> we'll talk at you later. Bye. Bye. Red button. Red button. Hey y'all, I'm Carrie. And I'm Donna. And we are a paranormal chicks who love to talk about things that go bump in the night and the real life monsters who live among us. Join us every Monday as we creep it real with our conversational storytelling of true crime and the paranormal. And if I do say so myself, we're pretty freaking hilarious. Uh, yeah we are. Each episode will have one true crime story told by me and one paranormal story told by Donna. We'll cover everything from ghosts and goblins to your garden variety serial killer. We're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to your podcasts. We offer show notes on our website at paranormalchicks.com for each episode. They include all images and videos we mentioned during the podcast. We want to hear all about your sinister sightings, so send us your stories to aparanormalchicks at gmail.com. Send us anything paranormal or true crime related. And remember to creep it real and, and don't, don't get, get scared. scared.